Happy Valley for the third last time of the season on a Wednesday night. A nine race program to get to teeth into as well here on Racing to Win. A very warm welcome to the show. I'm Andrew Lejeune. Pleased to say I'm joined by our form analyst Paul Lally and race caller Tom Wood as well. Tom and some some pretty decent nice horses coming out uh, towards the end of the program on Wednesday night. Yeah, certainly Andrew. The last race looks to be a cracker over 1,200 metres. Class 2, Shining Ace, who was the last start winner. Country star, we haven't seen him win for a long time. He's had a few internal issues, but he's back to 1,200 metres. He does have the seven-pound claim of uh, Alfie Chan. And uh, also, uh, Victorium, uh, he's just got a little bit of a wide stall to overcome does Victorium Zach Purton and Francis Lloyd but looks to be a strong end to the, the programme for the nine race card. Absolutely uh, no jackpots to speak of uh, Paul what else we've got to look forward to though? Yeah there is and uh, with only seven race meetings to go in the season uh, all these horses have been up for a while or most of them have been uh, you've got a couple of the newcomers in there as well, a couple of first starters just having a, a run before the end of the season, trying to get a win on the board. So all in all, it's, it's pretty good. There should, should be some uh, good racing and some exciting ones too. I'm looking forward to seeing if Sky Darcy can go on with it. Now he's up and great. All right, that's it's a complete pack into the show with the nine races on the programme because we need to look back first on the weekend action from Chartin in our racing review. It was the final group races of the season here in Hong Kong. The Premier Cup and then the Premier Plates with uh, Southern Legend and Dances with Dragon, the two runners for Casper Founds. And it was Dancing with Dragon, Tom, who actually made a mess of them in the end. Yeah, he did. Uh, once he got to the front here with uh, Keith Jung in the saddle, he uh, set sail for home and he was uh, off and gone. You can see he's got the ears pinned back. Uh, Keith had got him clear here and they were queuing up for the minor spots and uh, was a very strong win in the end uh, from him. Just the, the, the dominance that he, he did it in and uh, a real turnaround from where he came from uh, probably four or five months ago with uh, the way he's gone and the, the Casper found stable. He's just uh, gone from strength to strength. Yeah, as the Aussies say, he fair dink and bolted him, didn't he? He just won so easily. Uh, this horse, obviously, the, his stable mate was the more favoured of the two. But, gee, he won impressive and uh, looking dapper there in his linen suit there. Casper was uh, very happy. You've got yeah. one of those, Paul? I haven't, but they're very nice, aren't they? I don't think I, I've got the body for it, unfortunately. Uh, big win for, uh, for Keith Neal, of course. Hasn't had his best ever season, but uh, Group 3 success there. Um, obviously delighted with that. Uh, the Premier Cup, which came up early on the programme, that was a big win for, uh, for Jolly Banner, um, as well for Ricky Ewan and, uh, and Matthew Poon. Um, as far as the winners on the programme is concerned, uh, though, boys, we've got some big moves here. Uh, winning Brew and United We Stand in particular, Tom. Yeah, well, United We Stand. We've seen a couple of horses get absolutely hammered by the handicapping panel uh, down the straight recently. Sparkling Knight, he got 14 points the other day. United We Stand, 13 points for Class 5. Came back with blood on the track here. Winning Brew was another impressive winner as well. Uh, amazing chocolate fair dink and bolted up, as too did uh, Yi Chong Pegasus as well. Yeah, look, I, it's interesting with that uh, United We Stand because he has got those internal uh, problems. So, uh, And he still managed to win really nicely. And I, I did like the win of Amazing Chocolate. I think he's definitely going places. Yeah, dropped into Class 5 with a 13-point rise. That'll be a while before he's back in Class 5 company. Again, United We Stand. They were the big winners on the day. Let's uh, see if we can find some more with our horses to follow. There were some uh, nice performances on the programme, I thought. Paul, yours is in the uh, last race, I think, you found yeah, one. Yeah, in the last year. A horse called Super Dobbin. Now, he's on a, an awkward rating. He's on a rating of 80, which means he's right at the top of the class there. But, but he, he seemed to handle it like a tough here with no problems. He got well back from his wide draw. He came down the outside and hit the line uh, really strongly, I thought. It was a really good run. This is only his second start in Hong Kong. He did bring some good form from South Africa before he got here. The stable's going really well at the moment. And uh, I think there's plenty more to come from this horse. I just wonder if, 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 he, if he did go up a rating point or two, it'd be good for him, I think, because he'll come in with a lightweight uh, at, at the bottom of the top, uh, next grade. All right, so that's super dull in for Paul. What about you, Tom? I went with the big luck champ who went around in one of the earlier races on Sunday. Race number four, it was class four over 1,200 metres. And uh, he was able to run third on this occasion for Blake Shin. He went round at odds of 87 to 1 behind first responder and Golden Link, who was the short price favourite in the race. But I thought he, he rallied on well enough there over the, the final stages. He had uh, come from... Uh, New Zealand, where he trialled over there a couple of times with Paulo S uh, Alonso Sullivan and uh, Andrew Scott here with Paulo Sullivan, and I thought his uh, run had plenty of merit to the line. So watch out for him second up. Whether he gets another run before the end of the season or not, I'm not sure, but he was good there, I thought. First responder breaking through there and 
under Jerry Chow. Had a couple of winners uh, on the program. Um, Entrusted is the horse uh, for me. Now, it used to be called Entrusting when he raced in the UK for James Fantry. One over the 2,000 metres. So this is 1,400 metres here. The, the challenge for Douglas White's trainers is to get some speed into his legs. So at this sort of level, there's not too many opportunities up around the 2,000 metre mark. But on this evidence, even just a step up to a mile, I think, would seem to good effect. Flying Swords, the winner. That's fantastic show. Has had a great season in the green jacket, staying on strongly. He's not too far off them. Pickens a recent winner also. So I think uh, Entrusted, as he's now known, could hopefully make a, if we get him out before the end of the season, make a, a quick return there. Now, as far as the suspensions and fines are concerned out of the weekend, uh, Chad Schofield, unfortunately, um, missed most of the day through dehydration. He's back Wednesday night. He got a day. Joe Moreira. It's going to pay, isn't it, in the jockey's title race? He got a day in a $75,000 fine. Jerry Chow, he got a day as well. Now, it's actually Happy Valley, which he's not riding at the moment, but he was due to ride. So his, de his debut at Happy Valley will now be put back by one week. And uh, Victor Wong got a day as well, plus a $7,500 fine. All right, I think that brings you up to speed as far as what happened uh, on the weekend. We can start looking forward to Wednesday night's action. Race number six, Yo-Yo King not going round. He's replaced by Island Shine. Antoine Hamlin will be in the saddle there in the sick. This is meeting number 81 of the season. Seven to go. We're on the C course. Nine races to look forward to. No class fives. We start off with a class four. 1,200 metres uh, is the trip, headed by a last start winner and Harrier Jet. Paul O'Sullivan and Zach Burton. He was favourite when beating Shining on. Chikorita fourth, last amount. Beaten 10 lengths, mind you. Comes up with barrier 11 on Wednesday. Sell my soul. Money for him on debut. He was sixth behind Yi Chong Pegasus. They go for the earplugs. Winning ways. Blinkers come off. Hood goes on from barrier four for Matthew Poon and Danny Shum. Travel day took. Still winless in Hong Kong after 41 starts. Barrier seven for him. Sky Treasure will roll forward from 12 and fun times. First up here since uh, April. No recent trial, Tony Millard and Wagner Borges combined with him. Speed map, Paul. Uh, Tom, what are we looking at? Looking here at uh, Regency Poet, he's likely to go forward and Sky Treasure's gonna do a little bit of work, no doubt, from uh, gate number 12 for Jack Wong to try and get in. King's Race is a horse that has been dangerous on the pace with his only win. He's going to be ridden by Vincent Ho. Sell My Soul should drop in for the perfect run from gate number two with the uh, earplugs in for the first time. Glorious Buddy in winning ways on the next line. Looks like it will be a little bit tough for Chikorita, who's drawn in gate 11. Here is Sell My Soul. He's come on nicely since his debut run. It wasn't a bad run either. Uh, coming to Happy Valley, looks like he'd be suited here. The earplugs go in for the first time from barrier two, so he looks one of the main chances The Sell My Soul. Regency Poet from the front. You can see he's under a decent hold here. Look, the horse is quite keen. His best run was two starts ago. It was yielding on that, or good to yielding on that time, but I thought he ran really well. And if he can get a, a soft lead, he can finish in, the, finish in it. I really like this piece from both Fun Times and Sparkling Dragon, both running at the meeting. But keep an eye on uh, Fun Times here, moving nicely here. Quick time, they had a decent jump out and comes in with the lightest weight. That's some 79. OK, all right. So we'll keep moving, though. First of all, we're going to have a look at is uh, the winning run of Harrier Jet. Course and distance back at the start of the month, beating Shining On. He was a well-back favourite on this occasion. Uh, Tom, and he saluted. Yeah, he was at 2.5 in the, the market, uh, Andrew. Drew gate number three. He's just got to uh, overcome gate number nine this time round, uh, Harrier Jet. Zach Purton sticks uh, with him. He has one off marks higher than this in the past, and he went away for a pretty decent win here. Just got that top weight to carry this time round. He's a three-time winner from his 56 starts, so that sort of tells a story in itself. It's just whether he can put two together. All right, so we're looking at some straight course action here with Hercules. Caught the eye, but just out of the money, seventh here. Glorious buddy and winning ways, Paul. What are their chances? Oh, I haven't got any of the three in. Um, I mean, Hercules probably finished, well, he did finish the best of these three. Glorious buddy and winning ways well back. He did catch the eye, Hercules. He hit the line strongly enough, but I'm happy to watch him in this. Yeah, he, he ran on OK here, um, back to 1,200 metres. You're, you're a keen spotter of the track work, Paul. Has he been out uh, galloping much? Yeah, he has. He's had plenty of work. Dennis Yip's been giving his team uh, plenty coming into the last few meetings. All right, one more uh, horse to take a check on. We saw him in track work, and it's Sell My Soul. So there's money for him on debut behind Yi Chong Pegasus, Paul. He was well beaten at the time, finished sixth, but Yi Chong Pegasus came out and won again on the weekend. He did, so uh, that form looks quite good. Um, and a lot of uh, John size runners do come on for the run as well. Uh, he wasn't pushed in this trial by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, he moved nicely here. You can see Authentic Champ, he's in the next race. He runs second behind Beauty Applause. So it was a nice, quiet trial for all three. Yeah, Bark de Borges was on board for the trial. Joe Marrera rides, of course, Joe, and that trial was riding uh, Beauty Applause. I thought he began well. He probably peaked over the last 100 in that first up run. All right, but he's our favourite, Paul, for the first Sell My Soul. 
And I think he'll get the best run in the race as well. That's why I'm going to go with him on top. He's drawn barrier number two. He, I think he maps very well in this. So I've got him on top to beat King's Race. Another one likely to go forward from his barrier number five. Regency Poets drawn wide. He's got early gate speed and come across. And fun times, he's back to 1,200 metres. His win was over 14. I didn't mind his trial, though. I think he could run on into a minor placing. As, as Gallop, I should say. 5 2 8 12. Yeah, same Quinella as uh, Paul, five and two. Uh, I do like the five in the race, uh, sell myself for all the same reasons. Uh, trial was all right, and it's not a strong race to kick the program off. King's race can race handy and uh, is dangerous from a position like that. Harry Jet, the last uh, winner. Regency Park probably had an opportunity to win earlier in the season, but if they go forward, I think that'll really suit him. So five, two, one and eight. Not too dissimilar from me, but yeah, I'll go Regency Poet on top. I think if Karras can find the front and dictate, it was a good run, two starts back behind Destin Jury. Ignore his last start efforts. That's race one.